I think I owe you an apology. Um, last week, I said I was going to play Data Doll this week, but this week is Commoner, not Blitz. Well, it's Commoner Blitz, but <sighs> there's something else too. This week in Commoner, I played Ira. Hi friends, welcome back to Nearly Sane Games. I'm Neil, and this is the Armory Report. This week's Armory event, Commoner. And while I do like some Commoner, I decided this week that I was going to try the big bad, Ira. And not just any Ira build, the Ira Pummel build, or at least my version of it. Let's take a look at the deck. All right, here it is. We're going to start out with our hero, Ira Crimson Haze, the Dirty Dirty Ninja. Uh, Ira says on the second attack, our second attack each turn gets plus one. It is an awesome ability that we will abuse greatly. Uh, for our weapons, running the two harmonized Kadachis allow us to attack uh, paying one for one. And if there's a card with cost zero in our pitch zone, it gains go again. We will abuse that quite a bit. Hope Merchant's Hood. Uh, occasionally we'll get an all red hand and we need to shuffle that away and get a new one and Hope Merchant's Hood lets us do just that. Iron Rot Legs. Iron Rot Legs? Are you kidding me? Yes. No. This is uh, allows us to block for one in the leg slot which we have nothing else to do there and uh, that will be great for us. Heart and Cross Strap allows us to cheat on one of our attacks that costs two. Uh, makes it cost two less. And uh, we will be definitely using that. And Goliath Gauntlet allows us to pump up an attack that costs two or greater by two. And uh, that is going to be very useful for our strategy. Well, let's start with uh, a sample hand and let's see what we can do. Let's say this is a five card hand. I've got a card in Arsenal. And uh, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to start by pitching a blue. That's going to give us three resources. So we're going to spend one resource, this is a zero cost blue, to Kadachi for one. Then we're going to break our heart and cross strap, break our Goliath gauntlet, so that we can play our Surging Strike. Surging Strike uh, comes in for five, plus two for the Goliath gauntlet, plus one for Ira's ability. So we're five, six, seven, eight for this attack. And this has go again. So we are going to uh, use that go again and play our Whelming Gust Wave immediately after that. So this gains plus one, go again, and if this hits, draw a card. Uh, we're going to assume that we don't draw a card just because uh, this is still gross as is. We're going to swing a Kadachi for another one point, and we'll pitch our remaining blue to end our combo with a barraging Bronhide. This is coming in for five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, plus another seven. So 21 points of damage on a five card hand. And that's assuming our whelming gust wave does not hit and draw us a card. If it draws us a card, we still have one resource left uh, and we could potentially do even more damage. This is bonkers in Commoner. So I, my best deck, which is my Prism deck, uh, can do up to, if it had a really bonkers hand, it could do 18 points of damage on a five card hand. So we're three above that. And that is ridiculous. All right, we're going to start off with our big hitters. Now, the goal of this deck is we want to play a blue, swing a Kadachi with go again, and then fire off a big attack on our second turn with our bonus, and potentially add a pummel to that. That's our main game plan. Uh, so we start out with Surging Strike. This is excellent because it costs us two. We can use pummel with it. And it has go again, so we can still follow up with the second Kadachi. So we're running two of those. A flying kick. This this 
changes our order a little bit. If we pitch a blue, it's going to be Kadachi Kadachi and then into Flying Kick. But that Flying Kick is going to come across for 7. So that's a 10-point attack. And then we have Stony Wootenhog. This is an excellent card for 2. Uh, it can come in for 7 if it's unblocked or if it's not blocked by 2 non-equipment cards. So they need to play uh, either something from our hand and something from their arsenal or 2 cards from their hand. Otherwise, it gets a plus one, and then with Ira, we're even more. Adrenaline Rush. I like this card if we're behind. If we're behind, then it becomes uh, seven power for two. If we're ahead, then it's we're already ahead, so what's the matter? It's still four. Good for us. Barraging Bronhide. This is a three cost, but it comes in for seven and uh, can come in for eight. And if we're using it with Ira, comes in for nine, which is can come in for nine, which is gross. Uh, Wounded Bull, another three cost, but this is also another one that if we're behind, this comes in for eight. So very good. And then we're going to have some cards that give us go again that we can use. Uh, these are also generally zero cost, so we can potentially pitch them for the first Kadachi if we need to, if we have a bad hand otherwise. We have a head jab. We have ride the tailwind. Ride the Tailwind has text that we're never going to use, but it has Go Again. Scar for a Scar. Conditional Go Again, but decent amount of power for us, so still good. Uh, Whelming Gust Wave only has Go Again if uh, we chain it after Whelming Gust Wave, or it, after Surging Strike, but um, another zero cost uh, with Potential Go Again, we can also end the combat chain with that, which will also be fine. Then Pummel. We're running all six Pummel. We really want to smash their face with a Pummel. We want them always scared of a Pummel, over blocking when we don't Pummel. Uh, good stuff. Uh, great for this deck. Lead the Charge. Here's another. Here we're going to start off with our zero cost blues. We're going to have a lot of them. Uh, we, we generally want to start our turn pitching a zero cost blue. And. Uh, Everything except our pummels, uh, all of our blues are zero cost. So if you have a blue in hand, it's going to do what you want it to do. Lead the charge. This is an excellent card because it can potentially give things like Wounded Bull uh, essentially go again. Uh, if not, a zero cost blue for fuel is great. Scar for a scar blue. Potentially we can throw this out if we need to. If we're, if we're running behind, um, we can send it across for two with go again. Helps us go wide. Soul Beam Strike, uh, I generally not, would not throw this at a, at a person unless it was absolutely at the end of the combo, but uh, still potentially can throw it. Uh, not great, but zero cost and blue. Uh, Ride the Tailwind, uh, zero cost with go again. This can occur in late game. If we get this, we can throw it out there and go with our go wide kind of strategy and Kadachi throw a million Kadachis at our opponent. Rising Knee Thrust. We don't have Leg Tap in here. We're never going to combo it, but zero cost blue. Um, we do have two of those in there. Something has happened. Here we go. Uh, Whelming Gust Wave. We can, again, combo it with Surging Strike, but probably not. But zero cost blue. And Head Jab. Um, also, go again. So this is uh, potentially another Kadachi that we could send out. And there it is. That's the deck. All right, this is dirty, but uh, let's see how I did. We went four rounds, and my first round was against a Bravo. Now, this one I need really needed to watch out for the crush effects because I couldn't just let all the damage come over. I really needed to get some blocks in there. So, lots of pummels coming in. I, you'd really need to be aware that every turn you could have a pummel coming your way. Uh, we quickly got down to, uh, he was at two and I was at one. Uh, I was able to get an adrenaline rush sent over for seven. So I whittled him down. So we were both at one, one. And so this became a game of he swings the hammer. I block for four. I swing Kadachi, Kadachi, and another zero cost attack usually for uh, one because I'm down to blues 
and he blocks those out and we swing back and forth and eventually it got down to getting him to uh run out of cards and so uh eventually he was down to three cards and i was able to uh or i got him down to two cards and i was able to swing three times and finally kill him um we were running out of time running out of cards uh that was my last card so uh just barely got there now round two was against a chain now this is the first chain i've seen in commoner which was very interesting and it was mean um shrill of skull form is a nasty nasty card especially with uh chain able to create a soul shackle every turn uh and boost that up and you add minnowism on top of that and you've got a very deadly attack with go again and a rosetta thorn coming in after it uh very scary and uh that Rosetta Thorn hit me extra hard because I really wasn't ready to block any arcane damage and having that come in for two every turn, uh, two, two arcane and then the two physical, way too much. Um, I got, he got, I got him down to four, but I was down to one and again, no arcane barrier. So, uh, with his Rosetta Thorn attack, it was, it was lethal. Uh, Round three was against an Azalea, and uh, first attack was a nine dominate arrow, which is pretty rough on the first turn. Uh, I was getting some awkward hands. I was getting uh, some hands that were large amount of blue. Um, I I used my uh, my headpiece early and shuffled away my hand and got a new hand uh still wasn't getting the super powered hands that i really wanted to push a lot of pressure uh i, I took another big attack with a sleep dart uh so now even my iron ability wasn't going to trigger uh we were down to 11 and i was at one not not a good place so i swing at kadachi of course he takes that uh then i pop my cross strap and my uh my gauntlet and throw in a stony wooten hog threatening nine um i also pitched a blue i have two resources floating clearly marked that i still have two resources floating i have one card in arsenal and he got greedy he got greedy and he took it and i added that pummel bringing that total attack to 12 and uh it was a yellow pummel and took the win um and i i just put that loss on him uh i think he if he had blocked a little bit he would have easily had me uh but sometimes you just got to say I'm, I'm gonna go for it and uh sometimes that, that doesn't work for you my round four was against uh Dorinthia. And, uh, I started off pretty greedy. Um, I let, I let Dawnblade get a counter early on. Uh, now my, my return was, uh, a Kadachi Stony Wooten Hog and a Yellow Pummel, which is, is a pretty decent attack. Pulled two cards from his hand, uh, and pulled an additional card from the Pummel. So I knew that that return was good. Uh, he was able to pump up his uh, return dawn blade for five, and I needed to use uh, I think I used two cards to block that out to make sure I, that counter was lost. So uh, decent back and forth, but uh, early on that that anytime you give dawn blade a counter that is going to come back to you, and you're going to have to deal with that. Um, so uh, I did miss. Um, uh, my flying kick trigger, uh, what I wanted to do was to pop my heart and cross strap and then do Kadachi Kadachi flying kick. Uh, the heart and cross strap will, will, uh, discount your next attack action card. So the Kadachis don't eat that. Uh, but 
you need to make sure with the flying kick that you are you have the combat chain going still and popping the heart and cross strap breaks the combat chain uh, so i definitely lost some value that i could have had there um, it really telegraphs what you're doing but uh, for the extra damage, I, I, I really should have had that turn. So instead, it was Kadachi, Heart and Cross Strap for six, which is much less good as Kadachi for one, Kadachi for two, um, Flying Kick for seven. Uh, overall, that would have been a much better attack. Uh, seven also hits that breaking point to get a little extra damage in. Uh, so... Dory is, of course, very tricky to block. Um, as we got to late game, it was uh, Dory just swinging in Dawn Blade. And what I want to do there is block for six every time and hope and pray that he doesn't overpower that. Uh, we got down to one and one. Uh, and it was... A matter of Dawnblade coming in, um, I was pretty sure that he had a pump, but I didn't know what pump he had. So Dawnblade came in. Uh, I had a blue card, a I think a, a red head jab in hand, and two other two blocks in hand. So I decided to block for four. Uh, of course, he had a pump that pumped it up by two, brought it up to five, and ended up killing me. Um, I was in a situation there that I had to do something. And I could have blocked for six. I probably should have blocked for six. But that would have pulled three cards out of my hand. That would have left me with Kadachi Kadachi. And, uh, and that would definitely pull two cards out of his hand. But... Uh, that would also leave him with two cards. So he'd still have pitch, he'd still have uh, pump, and it, it's an ugly situation, uh, especially for Ninja, which has a lot of cards that only block for two. So that was the uh, Armory event. I went two and two, which was uh, much less... I, I was hoping for a much better record. Uh, in fact, the only person that had uh, four wins that night was uh, somebody that was also running an Ira Pummel deck, but I think that their Ira Pummel deck was better optimized than mine. Um, I probably could pull out the blue pummels. I don't think that they're necessary. And uh, potentially reduce the number of um, of blue cards. Uh, I, I was flooded blue a little bit too often. Uh, maybe I push in some yellow cards to balance it out. Uh, this wasn't my favorite deck though. I, I feel like, uh, there's probably a better optimized version. And if you get the right cards in hand, you're pushing a ton of damage. There are some games that I did in my testing where I could push 12 damage a turn on, on average and getting those 17 power to 20 power hands was not that uncommon and if you hit that if you hit that early game then you're great because you push in all this damage and they're going to use their hand to block and still take a bunch of damage and so then you can draw back up and if you can continue that push then you can uh, win games very, very quickly. The problem is that if you miss, uh, or if you go second and take a really big turn with uh, some of these other decks, uh, I, I think Azalea can can have some really powerful turns. Uh, Chain was, was definitely a surprise and very, very scary. But I don't know. I Obviously, uh, Ira Pummel did... 4-0 last night, so maybe that deck is the correct deck to go with, but uh, we'll see. I, 
I think I prefer my Prism deck overall. So next week we have, next week is uh, Blitz. Now I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to get to the Armory event next week. Uh, if I don't, I will still do a deck tech on the uh, data dial deck that I have built and I'll show some sample hands. It does some really neat things. I don't think it is a winning deck. I think it is a fun and a lot of things are happening kind of deck. Um, but I think it's just going to get overrun, uh, especially by um, Kassai, who can dish out a lot of damage over uh, multiple uh, attacks, uh, very efficient. And um, I think if you're looking for a deck, that's probably the deck to go with. But we'll try out Datadal and, and we'll see how that goes if I can get there. Uh, also next week, next weekend, is um, SCG Con uh, in Indianapolis. And I will be there. And I'm not sure what I'm going to play. So help me out, if you will. And tell me what you think I should play in the comments below. Uh, I'm considering playing a, a Prism deck. I think that that will be... Uh, Prism is, is very well uh, positioned. And I don't know how to play her very well, but I could give it a shot. Uh, I could also play a Levia deck, which I, I don't think is well positioned, but could be fun to play. Uh, I could try playing Kano and uh, see where I can go with that. Um, that will be quick matches, and I'm still trying to learn how to play Kano, so maybe that would be good to get more reps. Um, but I don't know. What do you think I should play? Let me know in the comments below. There is The Calling on Saturday, and then there is the Battle Hardened or a, a different event on Sunday that I'll be in. And uh, give me, let, let's do one deck for one of them and a different deck for another one. And let me know what you think I should play, and we'll give a report on how I did. Uh, I'm not expecting to do well in the main events. Uh, I just don't have the reps that I need. You really need to practice a lot, and... Um, I just don't have time for that, but I will be happy to play something. And if you see me at Indy, feel free to say hi. I'll be wearing a nearly same game shirt and uh, be happy to see you all. So until next time, I'm Neil, and this has been the Armory Report.